Hey, in case you didn't notice, we are now in the final stretch, and today we're going to talk about how we're going to take this goal all the way to the finish line. I'm Travis Ray Colopy, the Executive Director of Fit Enable Productions, and I want to welcome you to Part 10 of the Tummy to Tuck series. This is the final stretch. Now, normally this episode would have been last week as we started the third and final trimester of the 12-week training period that we'd started so many weeks ago. But with that news that the whole purpose of the goal I had set my, for myself had been canceled when the town of Cary canceled the Cary 150 uh, gala in November, I wanted to do an emergency episode to talk about that. But that was uh, uh, the content I had planned for last week is still important, and we're going to go over that today as we work through the final stretch of our training plan. Now, part of what I want to do with this episode today is to show you that not only have I been preaching the past several weeks, but I have been practicing too. Now, obviously, I'm human like the rest of you. I have had my ups and downs where some days I didn't get, get out of bed and get, do the work, and others where I maybe ate or drank things I shouldn't have done that d didn't contribute towards my goal. But on balance, I have been doing a pretty great, great job, and I want to make sure that in this final stretch, not only am I maintaining what I have been doing, but I am in fact escalating it as we all should be as we work towards the final steps of our goal. Now, one of the things I talked about in one of the earliest episodes was the value of joining a team. And this is something I didn't actually do when I started out this process. I thought I could go it alone and I did a pretty good job. I know my strengths and weaknesses and uh, I'm generally not a big fan of the group workout stuff. I do generally prefer to do things on my own, but there comes a certain point where you do need that extra group, the support, the accountability, the encouragement, all those great things to help you take it to the next level. And I did finally reach that a couple weeks ago. And lo and behold, we have this awesome organization that has become part of the Fit Enable community this past year. If you haven't been out to our, our events, the in-person events uh, the past several months, you would have seen that Camp Gladiator now has a really great presence. Not only do they have an awesome booth where they show off the uh, great workouts they do, but their awesome people have been coming out and helping us set up our events, volunteering, and helping make sure it's a great experience for all the participants who come out to our races. Well, Camp Gladiator, who I've known about for a long time, I've never actually participated with them before, but this past week I joined their program. I took them up on one of their uh, special Halloween offers and Wednesday morning at 4.45 a.m. in front of the REI over by Crossroads. I had my first workout with them and well I certainly felt it uh, the rest of the day and the next morning. I was pretty sore because they do a fantastic job of keeping you moving and they don't let you stop but they also don't let you drag around. They keep keep it positive, keep you excited, and all the other people I was working out with who I've met there uh, were great to work out with. But the past few workouts that I've had with Camp Gladiator this week really show that the proof is in the pudding for a lot of the things I've been talking about the past couple months. And I was able to experience a lot of these things in a, in a way that I had not uh, before. So I just want to go over a few of the things I've experienced myself that might help you if you've not experienced these things before or you have but to a lesser degree. If you can kind of reorient your workouts or whatever activities you're doing that to where you might be able to experience these positive things, they might do you a world of good as you try to progress down that final stretch to your goal. First, when you change your exercise routine, especially when you change the time of day, for me, I went from working out roughly between uh, – 6 and 7 a.m. to about 8, 8 a.m. to getting up at 4 a.m. to be at a workout that started at 4.45. Two things. One, getting your day rolling that much earlier really helps you your morning start off. You know, if it got, for me personally, if it got to a place where I hadn't started my workout by like 6 or 7, there's a pretty good chance it wasn't just wasn't going to happen that day as I just lazily rolled into uh, feeling like, oh, well, now it's too late to get, get a workout in. I'm just going get, to get to work and that's my day. Well, that's not a great thing, but getting up early, make sure I had no excuses to get the workout in, and then I could still get to the rest of my day at a really good time and get rolling on the important things I needed to get done. Second, getting up at 4 a.m., really make sure that I need to go I go to bed at a really early, reasonable time. I am started uh, wearing out around 8, 8.30, and I wanted to make sure I was in bed by 9, one, because I was really tired that day, but I also knew 
and a few short hours I'd be getting up again at 4 a.m. to get to the next Camp Gladiator workout and I didn't want to cheat myself out on that sleep. Sometimes obviously I kind of laid awake a little longer than I had hoped to and didn't get as much sleep but you know I didn't let that alarm clock go ignored the next morning and got up and got going. The next thing is that getting up that early and getting going on a really intense workout made me really aware of what I put in my stomach the night before. The night before my first workout with Camp Gladiator, I had a very heavy dinner with a bowl of chili that obviously had the cheese and the chips and everything that went with that. And then I piled on some leftover birthday cake on top of that. And lo and behold, the next morning, I was still feeling very full and that was a little uncomfortable to trying to get around doing some intense exercises. Fortunately, I didn't have to clean off my exercise mat or anything else. But, you know, I wish I didn't have that big rock in my stomach. So as we've talked about before, as you start doing some of these uh, more positive habits with your exercise routines or whatever it is, you'll start to notice that that starts having a uh, bleed over effect on your other habits that start helping you make those positive as well. So as I've changed a positive habit with my exercise routine, or getting up early, getting going, where I have no excuse, that means I also have to be much more conscientious about what I put in my body the night before to make sure that I am ready to go the next morning and not feeling unnecessarily uncomfortable or full or whatever. And just generally all around need to be making some better choices with what I put in my body. The next thing is when you feel like you're getting stuck in a rut with your exercise routine, it really helps to have a coach. And we've talked about this before. And with Camp Gladiator, the coach for the session I have is Cody. Cody has been out at all of our races. He leads the Camp Gladiator crew that comes out. And he is a fantastic and very motivational coach to have. He keeps things upbeat. He keeps you moving. He keeps everyone uh, encouraged to keep pushing themselves, even when we're in the last few minutes of a long workout and we still have you know extra reps or rounds of things that get in. He keeps you going past beyond what you might want to do on your own if no one was watching, which is a fantastic thing to have. That helps us push beyond our uh, limits and get helps us push back beyond our self-limiting beliefs and helps us get to the next level that we're aiming to get to. On top of that, you have all these other great campers around you encouraging you and being a good example for what you want to do. I, I think in group settings, no one wants to be uh, the quitter. No one wants to be the one who's not keeping up. And so it's a fairly positive, competitive thing. I want to say it's like uh, toxically competitive because it's not like anyone's trying to bump the other, another person out of the way or make sure that they're getting ahead and somehow. It's just that everyone's there working hard. And in, when you're in that environment, you want to be there working hard too. Especially when you're doing some partner exercises, you don't want to be the, the person who lets the group down. And with this group, I found uh, not only that a lot of the people who have come out with Camp Gladiator, shout out to Andy, have, are at this program, which is really nice to have. It, it, for me, especially going into a new uh, group activity, it's nice knowing people there already. It's much more comfortable for me to get, uh, you know, fit into the crowd, get comfortable with everything, and get going on what I need to do with Camp Gladiator. But again, over the this week, other people I've known, you know, have shown up. Uh, who are already members of it, which is you know, pretty awesome too. So, so throughout the week, the group of friends, both new and uh, existing, grew, which is an amazing thing to have. On the whole, I have nothing but praise for Camp Gladiator, and I'm really glad I got involved with it this past week. So that will help me take it to the next level for what I want to do. And if you're looking for something similar or you need help with your own exercise regimen, I'd highly recommend checking them out. They have a very flexible schedule and locations for all their different camps, and I think it'd be almost impossible to not be able to find something that works for you and your schedule and your goals. The point of this is really that now that we're in that final trimester of the plan, when we move from the first four-week period into the second four-week period, remember we had that video where we talked about escalating your plan and starting to ratchet up the intensity, the uh, endurance, and all the different pieces of your plan, whatever you might be actually working on, to move yourself from that novice phase to a more intermediate phase and then so that you'll get yourself ready for the advanced phase that will take you all the way to the finish line of your goal. Well, now we are in that advanced phase. So if you did the work that you're supposed to and ratcheted up your effort, you should be ready to go and have a good foundation for what you need to do in this final phase, which again is to keep ratcheting it up. If you have a race deadline coming up, 
you know you have that distance and you know you have a time that you're wanting to achieve. Well, now is when you start really putting all those pieces together and really driving towards that goal. Again, if you found some things in the intermediate phase that didn't work for you, you still have a little bit of time to tweak. But by now, what you're doing should really be concrete and dialed in for the kind of activities that you need to be doing. Whatever your goal might be, those activities will be different. Uh, the different steps to that will be more tailored to the respective goal you have. But whatever it might be, you should be really dialed in on what that is and what it will take to finish out this process. Again, for me, joining Camp Gladiator was kind of what helped me really dial in and escalate it to the next level for what I need to get done because I kind of reached a plateau for what I was doing by myself and having both a coach, more organized workouts, a time and place to be where there's accountability and encouragement were really what I needed to finish out this process. And I think now with just a few weeks left, um, which almost exactly matches the uh, period I've signed up for with Camp Gladiator, I think I'm in a much better place to achieve that goal. Another thing to keep in mind is that we are nearing the end of this process. If you set yourself the 12 week period that we had started with, if yours is longer, obviously you got a little bit more flexibility and time to keep working. That's great. But if you're within that 12 week period, we just have a couple weeks left. And one issue is when you can sort of see the end in sight, you know, it might be fuzzy and way far off in the distance, but you can kind of see it and you know it's there and you start getting that feeling that you're almost done. You, your mind and your body can start saying, all right, yeah, we've done it. And it might start encouraging you to slow down. That's not what you want to do. When you're racing, you always run all the way through the finish line. You don't stop before the finish line. You don't stop on the finish line and you don't even slow down. You race full steam ahead all the way across the finish line and you don't stop until there's someone way beyond handing you a bottle of water and a medal and a high five. Same thing when you're working for your goal. Do not slow down now. You're supposed to be escalating your intensity again, uh, increasing workout intensity, reps, mileage, weight, whatever it might be. Do not start backing off now. Finish out strong. A strong finish can have is just a, as much weight on your whole progress, your whole feeling about what you've accomplished, and your ability to move on to the next goal, you know, as much as anything else. As you know, everyone knows, a lot of times the way something wraps up can have can affect how we feel about everything that came before, even if everything was great. Let's take a very famous example: Game of Thrones. You had five or six fantastic seasons, everyone was loving it, then the producers started phoning it in the last couple seasons, and finally, right at the end, they really just fumbled the ball, and that's how everyone thinks about the show now. It kind of, everyone loved the first seasons, but everyone remembers how they felt and how disappointed they were with the ending, and that kind of affects how they feel about the rest of the show before even all the stuff they loved. Same goes with your goal. Don't flood the finish because it'll uh, color how you feel about everything you accomplished beforehand. So keep going strong. Now, as you remember, this is a 12-part series. Today is part 10. That means we got two episodes left, and we're going to continue to drive strong towards the finish with a few other topics. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit that notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. And if you have any comments or questions, please drop one below the video. Always appreciate the feedback even if it is something about myself and how I can improve these videos because I'm going to be keep coming back and doing more and more of these videos. That's part of my goal process as well. And if I can make them better in any way possible, let me know. And as always, if you know anyone in your life who might benefit from the Tummy to Tuck series or any of other Fitnable videos, please share this with them and it might help them out too. We look forward to seeing you at some of our upcoming events. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able.